Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, no more day walk on. Man, hey, we. But y'all gotta remember to like and subscribe all our social media platforms, including our new platform, Patreon. That's the only place you're gonna find our full length interviews after a while. It's coming soon, so y'all not going to find it on no YouTube no more, so y'all have to have to subscribe, and it's a paid membership, but it's only a little, little, so little, y'all got it. Y'all be all right. <laughs> Man, she, she done changed the whole intro of it, she's she letting it be no. And you know what? We got to do that more in mm -hmm. the middle and in the end, because yep. uh, that's what's about to happen, you know. You got to change it up. It's a new year. Mm -hmm. you, gotta deal with, you got to deal with Beast by Dre? Oh man, I need one. Yeah, yeah, I see you repping, man. We need, we need to charge some folks. We gotta man. charge exactly. you, man. Check yeah. it, man. Hey, man, y'all hear the voice, man. Y'all see who in here, man. Pimmy Ken's in the building, man. Thank you for coming back on Boss Talk 101. Hey, thank you for having me again. Man, Pimmy Ken, man. Listen, man. Say, man, you one of them guys, man. Like I said, last time I seen you run, man, I seen you was on. Uh, Drink champs. I seen you was on uh, 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 back on Beehive, and you shouted me out. Yeah. So and, and he shouted me out. And, and no jumper. And no jumper. I see you, man. You been everywhere. Yeah, man. I and, uh, I was I was there at eighty five South. So they, they mentioned my name. You, you know? was there. Yeah, you hear me say Pippa Kim right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing Boosie, yeah. Man, so so I mean, just a, a little spill on the on the Boosie Connect, just so people can understand what that whole run was about. Like when you guys took off and was you know campaigning, it was for the book, right? Okay, so uh, basically, when I do a deal, I'm dealing, doing a deal with a corporation. So these corporations have stipulations in their contracts, and one of the stipulations in the contract is that we must promote and market the book. So uh, it's my responsibility to make sure that Boosie is at all these uh, talk shows and podcasts and, you know, whatever, you know, promotion and marketing. So, you know, as, as the agent, you know, under Hip Hop Fraternity Literary Agency, you know, we have to make sure that the artist is on point. So my job is to call you guys up as I called everyone up. And then Boosie's job is to come and do the interview. Uh, sometime, you know, Boosie, He's not gonna do an interview for everybody unless they got some money, mm -hmm. you know. So he might like, I ain't doing it for the free free, but you know, uh, in some way he was obligated, you know, through contract to do those interviews. So I was just there to represent Simon and Schuster, which is my business partner. So anytime you know we do a deal with an artist or something like that, you probably gonna see me somewhere around because I get the itinerary and then I I make the contacts, send the books out to the podcasters, you know, make sure I, you know, get the communication going. Man, I just, I, I love the, the the way that you guys vibe as well, you know, uh, Boosie being a brother and, and you being so deeply embedded into hip hop. You know, people don't realize how deeply embedded you are mm -hmm. in the hip hop game. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Hip yeah. hop fraternity, was, was, that was something that now you came with, but you always been a part of the coach. The hip hop fraternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you always been there. Like, well, you know, I met Boosie uh, when he was he had to be about eighteen. I was uh, in the studio uh, to do. Uh, I think his name Terrell. I don't know if I'm Trill. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we was all at at, at the studio and Pimp C and I were there and Webby and Boosie was there and that's when I met Boosie the first time and I never talked to him his name but Pimp said that dude gonna be a cold dude. And then years later, you know, I met him uh, uh, at, in Milwaukee, I believe, and he didn't have a jacket on. And I had two mink coats, so I gave him a mink coat. He just reached in his pocket, gave me a wad, $100 bills. And from then, we was cool. And then when I went to Baton Rouge, I was at the casino gambling. I won like 20 bands, you know, I was just happy. I was like, man, I'm gonna call Boosie, you know, and I called him. I just wanted to tell somebody that was around in that area. And it, the place was like five minutes, 10 minutes from his crib. So I called him and we met at the gas station. I went to his house, I did a song with him, and then he went to jail. What was the name of that song? 
I don't even know, man. You don't remember? I did like three songs for Boosie. That shit never came. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Boosie won't put, Boosie put them, 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 all them tracks we got out, man. All this game I spit, you got to put that out. Man, said that he was down there with him right before. They had a remix, I think he said, the Ice Cream Paint Job. And then the, he said, man, I should have got a copy of it because they confiscated everything and, and, and took him to jail the next day. I said, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you never know when you're doing this stuff what's going to happen right absolutely man i mean you know uh the, 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 I, you know we talked about this briefly the the most ironic thing that ever happened to me was uh, uh pimp c and i had the three million dollar deal with dj jones with universal to do these movies and pimp was supposed to play me and he just abruptly died it was like it was appalling i was like wow i was shocked i said man this is crazy i mean you know and I think, you know, sometimes God, you know, he has plans for us. You know, man has plans, but God has plans, and God is the best of planners. So it must not have been in the plans for me and Pimp C to, you know, execute that deal. So that was some ironic shit that happened, you know. And then, you know, um, my guy D, who was also on the projects, he ended up catching the Fed's case. He went to the Fed joint for about five or six years. You know, so a lot of people that I was in close proximity with that was doing business with, they end up getting caught up, you know. So yeah. it was like I'm still free, you know. What I mean, I would, I, don't, you know, I don't do shit anyway. So, but you know, him dead, D, D, D in prison, both of them gone, you know. And I had all this equipment, all this film equipment, something similar like how you had. We had, but back then it was kind of really expensive. We had like thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of equipment. I'm just sitting here with this equipment, so I end up giving it to uh, another brother who's dead, Maroy, Michael wow. Maroy, you know, too real for TV. So I end up. Giving him, giving to him for a little bit of nothing, you know. But uh, you know, life, life happens, man. You know, uh, I mean, one thing we got to understand is that, man. You know, if you live long enough, you know, you'll find out. As a friend of mine always say, if you drop your books, you lose your lessons. Wow, you know, mm -hmm. life, that's true. Mm -hmm. Life is the only university you never graduate from. You know, life gonna show you something, teach you something every day. Mm-hmm. I, man, you know, when you look at the movies, you know. You see, you know, I'm your pusher, and you see all these different pimp movies or whatever. They got the big Cadillacs and all that. Did you ever go through those phases when you were playing with them cars and basically the, I'm talking about the older ones. I ain't talking about the new. I know y'all, the new ones, y'all kicked it hard, but run me down through there on some of these. Because I, I, you know, it, it ain't a movie. It's your life. So let me know or, or give me well, something well, to stop you, down. You, you know, the first car I bought of substance was the 280 Benz. Okay. And I think I was about. 20 years old. Yeah. And then uh, my partner of mine bought a Cadillac. You know, this is back in the... Uh, oh, when you said bought it, you mean you bought it right out? Oh, oh, no, oh. I'm talking like the whole... Purchase. Purchase. <laughs> okay, just <laughs> saying. Slim came with it. Because yeah. you, know, you back, hear people back, saying back, purchase back, and they're back then, paying payments. Back, <laughs> back then, too many black folks didn't know nothing about credit, you know, mm -hmm. especially I did. I wouldn't even qualify it anyway. <laughs> and I probably had a, a two... A two credit score. <laughs> I was even in the five hundreds, you know, because wow. they gave me some money. I was gonna pay them back anyway. But anyway, yeah. So you know, that was the first car, and then I think I got like a coupe, a Cadillac coupe. I think it was it was about this was in in the eighties, so it had to be about a seventy something. I don't know, seventy eight, seventy nine. So I get the coupe, and then uh, uh, once I. You know, I went to jail for a minute, and when I got out of jail, you know, I got a little old car. You know, it was a little truck. <laughs> I was gonna fix it up, and everybody was <laughs> selling dope, and they was having money and laughing. <laughs> they said, "Kid, niggas ain't driving trucks, man." They, I said, "I'm gonna put some twenties on it." They said, "Nah, man, you can't." Put, I said, "Man, I wanna fix the truck up, man." I said, "I paid about three, four thousand for the truck. I'm gonna fix this truck up." So my partner, he had a Jag and he had a convertible Benz. He said, "Man, no, nah, man, I can't let you do that to yourself." So. I seen what was going on. I said they was really having money, so I got me some real money. Then I bought me a Cadillac. About this, I got out of jail. Uh, I think this was a few years after I jail. It's about '93. Yeah, I bought a '91 Fleetwood. They were bad. So, they were bad. Two, but, that was that photo. Yeah, and I had to go. What color was it? It was a, a blue with gold dates. I had to, <laughs> in the gold package. I had hundred spokes on it. Ooh. That was a bad and boy, then man. The next Cadillac I bought was the Fleetwood. I bought the brand in the year of. Uh, uh, I ended up flipping that one, and I bought you know I think it was '93. I bought the '93 Fleetwood, a white. 
And then uh, I went from that to uh, nothing but Benz's. You used to put them on the highway, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, had to put them on the highway. Was, I was in the game, so yeah. you know you had to go. You got to go state to state, right? Yeah, I ain't giving you the full story. It's a lot of stuff <laughs> going on in between that, right? No, I already know. So uh, I bought the turquoise Benz, and then I bought the gray six hundred Benz, and then I just started buying foreign from there. Uh, Maserati, Rolls Royces, Bentleys, and shit, you know. Because at first, the, the form wasn't so what it was. It was, it was the Cadillac school. first, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was I, the Cadillac first. But I never really did the old school. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, I wasn't really into old schools. I was always, I like the new, new shit, you The know? new ones, yeah. And I never wore the, you know, I ain't do the Huggy Bear. I ain't do the goldfish in the shoes. No, 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 no. The big stacks and the funny hats, you know. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do all that. So I, I wore Monty suits, Gucci, you know. If you look at, even if you look at pimps up holes down, that suit that was a Versace suit, and those buttons yeah. was twenty four karat gold. I had them custom made. It was uh, the suit suit itself was about three four thousand, but the buttons there that shit was about ten thousand. You know, so I was always exclusive. You know, if you look at pimps up holes down, you see all my minks was custom, all my clothes was custom. You know, I didn't I didn't want to dress like nobody. But bring me down through that on pimps up holes down. Just give me the spiel on like the process of of them coming to you because you're a businessman. Well, uh, you're a business so, man. Yeah, now. That's, that, that's exactly what happened. I, I handled some business, so I'm, I'm in Chicago and I see these people with all these cameras, like similar to what you got going on. And I'm like, man, what the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, who are these niggas, man? This the fans, you know what I'm saying? What's happening with this shit, man? You know what I mean? I'm asking Bishop and everybody. They said that's HBO, so they mm -hmm. kept filming me. So I started talking real slick, and the dude Brent Owen said, man, I want to, I want to do business with you. I said, uh, I said, who you do business with now? He said, I do business with I said, well, if you want to do business with me, come to Milwaukee. So, <laughs> so I took him over from, away from Chicago because I knew I could help do business with them. I had to separate him from them yeah. in order to do what I wanted to do. So when he came, I took him to my clothing store. Uh, I asked him for a, 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 a substantial amount of money, which he agreed. I asked him to uh, end the movie with me, which he agreed. I asked for credits in the movie, which he agreed. And I also asked for... Uh, you know, the movie to be mainly shot, you know, where I want it to be shot. So a lot of the scenes in there, you know, you see the players ball, all that, that's Milwaukee when they walking up to the, you know, all the people walking and that's our hometown. Wow. So it was really to put my city on the map and uh, get them out there like that. So I began to, you know, uh, do a lot of scenes. That that bar where I was talking to the girl, that's my daddy's bar. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So we did it in my daddy's bar, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of my friends, you know, that was in there with people yeah, that lot I personally of knew. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of made it to a Milwaukee thing. I think it kind of upset a lot of my brothers in Chicago. But I'm from Chicago, so, but, you know, I'm 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 a Milwaukee dude. You know, when, when, when you know, you, you talk about Milwaukee, I am Milwaukee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, with or without, even when I was in prison, I didn't say I was from Chicago. Even though I, was, I said I'm from Milwaukee. You know, when I go across country, I didn't say I was from Chicago. I said I'm from Milwaukee. You know, I always said Milwaukee, 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 because I had a, a, a insatiable appetite to put Milwaukee on the, on the map. map. So that's why I wanted to put my city on the map. And, you know, Chicago had a bishop, so, you know, they didn't need no bishop yeah. in Milwaukee. They needed a Ken Ivy or a Pippin Ken. And so that's what I gave them. You know, I put on for the city, and, you know, I brought the biggest parties there. You know, we had the biggest players from all over the world come to the, to the mill, just like on the Mac. That's yeah, how yeah, it was in my yeah, city. Yeah. And, you know, they came to see me. They came to fuck with me. You know, a lot of players, you know, they knew I was boss up, you know what I'm saying? They see me in D.C., they see me in New York on 11th Avenue, they see me in D.C. on M Street, on, uh, on uh, 7th Street, New York Avenue, or Indy School, Van Buren, Bessonette, you know, they Harry see. Hines, you know, wherever it was a track, that's where I got famous at. You know, so wow. a lot of them dudes, you know, they would come to the, to the town and they were like, what key in that? You know, because they know I'm pulling the businesses out. I'm pulling, you know, it's going to be four or five pretty women in the car. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm going to have my gaiters on, my suits on. Clean. I'm going to be in pimp mode. I stayed in pimp mode. And I did it in 50 zip codes. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> hey, man. So, I got to ask you about that. Like, I, I know you did a lot of work. As um, far as I knew, Pimp C was real cool with uh, Too Short. Um, yeah. Did you and Too Short, did y'all ever you have some good run-ins or? Man, me and Too Short, man, we hung out. When I moved to Atlanta, man, Too Short, man, I would go by his house all the time. You know, we did two songs, Chase the Cat. Okay. And uh, we also did the song, What's My Favorite Word. He's in uh, the movie I got over there, Pimpology. You know, he's in the movie. Wow. You know, so, I mean, 
It's like, man, you can't name one person in that era that didn't fuck with Pimpin' Ken. That's why I be trying to tell these young dudes, I be like, man, I like fucked with everybody. Like, I'm on these dudes' album. I mean, you know, that's how these young people say, no cap. Yeah. No cap. You know what, ah. what, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what a lot of people don't really know about me. They don't know how entrenched I am in hip hop. And so when I say hip hop fraternity, a lot of people think it's more on some, you know, some wave or some new uh, fed or some new trend type stuff. No, man, I'm really the hip hop fraternity. You can't name, I mean, Nelly, you name him. Yeah, but, but I just want to ask you about Too Short, like when y'all, you know, because him and, him and Pimp and them, they had songs together, but you and him worked together on different occasions. Like, what did you think about him when he first came out? You know, when you, because he came out early on. Like, well, like you know, the Freaky Tales type, because you had heard about it. I him. thought he was a pimp when I first. I kind of got that feel, too. Yeah, I thought he was a pimp. And I, I used to be riding and listening to him in my car. I said, this nigga pimping, yeah. man. You know, he knows somebody pimping. Life Son. is too short. I but said, now I kind of focus. And you could, you could feel the yeah, essence and, of the and, music. And the beat, everything was on point, <laughs> man. You know, so I loved to meet some too short. So I go down to Atlanta to the Freak Nigga in 95. And uh, I see Outkast. I see Jermaine Dupri, all of them in 112. Okay. And they just walking around. I said, I can't believe this shit. I said, damn, you know, I'm 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 from Milwaukee, so you know, I'm seeing celebrities on TV. I think they have a hundred security guys mm -hmm. with them, and these is like mega stars to us. But they were just walking around. Walk around. So I had a little money back then, so I bought like, you know, ten, fifteen bottles of Moat. That's what's the drink of the uh, yeah back then Moat or either uh, the uh, Dime Perignon. So I bought all the bottles up and I invite Too Short, all of them over there to drink with us and stuff, all the rappers. It was in the VIP section, you know. I did that before even Meech did it. I mean, you know. So I'm gonna ask you about him next, yeah, but. No, So Meech did it, but I did it. I didn't even know what I was doing. I just bought some bottles, you know what I'm saying? Cause I had so much money and I was trying to, you know, just you know, be impressive. So we bought the bottles and, you know, next day and I know uh, I did a party in Milwaukee and, uh, it was a real big part of the players ball. Actually, the Hughes brothers came to the party. Yeah, that's hard, that's hard. It was the uh, American Pimp Party. Okay. So Too Short was scheduled to come. Unfortunately, you know, uh, he wasn't able to make it. Man. And uh, so uh, I was really upset with Too Short about that. I was, I was really mad. I said, man, damn, man. Hughes brothers, this is a big moment for me, you know what I'm saying? So uh, his manager sent me the five Gs back, because it was 10 Gs for him just to make appearance. He was really expensive back then. Mm -hmm. So uh, he sent me the five Gs back, but I was still mad, cause you know, I promoted to everybody, and you know, I was trying to build my name, and I was like, man, man this man. gonna fuck me up, man. Yeah. Niggas ain't gonna believe that I'm 100. They thought I was capping. Yeah, they, you know, back they, that they thought I was capping. So, uh, uh, side. so we, we go to somewhere in, in Atlanta, we had 112 in Good Game. You okay, remember Good Game? yeah, Good Game. Him and, him and Good Game, real cool. So he said, man, that was too short. Oh, I don't want to talk to no damn too short, man. <laughs> I'm upset. I said, man, man, you said me. I, I could have made a bunch of money, man. I was, I was. So he he, he uh, 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 killed, the, killed the shit, you know what I'm saying? And I I, I, I let the shit be, be gone. Bygones be bygones. And man, we became the best of friends. He would come and get me at, at the hotel, pick me up, take me to the house. We'd ride around. He just kicked pimping all day. Wow. And he was like, go in the studio. I was like, what you want me to say? Nigga, you know what you need to say? He said, he said what well, if I got to tell you what to say? Then you ain't no pimp. Like, <laughs> That's so, him. So I go in there, I talk, you know what I'm saying? And then, man, that man had so many bad bitches. You know? Did he? Oh, man, you go to Too Short House, man, especially the one he had in Gilbert Forest. You know, it was in the uh, same place where I think Scarface had a house over there. I think uh, the preacher, really? Chris O'Dollar had the big old house. Yeah, yeah. With the CD on it. You know, it was a lot of celebrities lived over there. So we'd go over there and too short, you know, he just have so many bitches and Dungeon Family would be there. Dungeon Family, all uh, them boys. Little John, man, you go with Too Short House. You man. might you see gonna anybody. You're going to see somebody of significance. And that was one of the things that, you know, that, that was cool. And, you know, he was my man. You know what I'm saying? He always had me, you know, to, to do something on the album. I think I might have did maybe four or five intros. I think I made two albums. But each one of them albums sold millions of records. So, you know, thanks to Too Short. Man, um, I was going to ask you about, you said the bottle popping, um, uh, Big Meech and them. You ever run into them, into them clubs? Because y'all were partying at the same time. Big Meech and I were cool way before the hip hop, I mean, not, excuse me, the BMF thing even popped out. He had really? a little bitty BMF chain. You know, he wasn't even doing it like how people was thought he was doing it. But what was so unique about Big Meech, and I stole this thing, Big Meech would buy all the bottles and all the liquor, and he would, you know, get his name popping, you know, and uh, 
it just kept on going, man. Next thing I know, I pulled up one day to uh, Magic City. He got the big boy Phantom out there. You know, they got the uh, the drop. Uh, what's those things? Was BMWs, you know. And now they pulling up in Lamborghinis. And now, you know, they got 40,000 ones on the table. And so a friend of mine named Big Silk, uh, he's a big time pimp out of Atlanta, you know, a former pimp. He's a preacher now. You know, he gave his life over to God. Him and I uh, was in the uh, lobby of, uh, in the uh, entrance of uh, one uh, Magic City, and Big Meech asked me and uh, <laughs> Silk to join. I, I looked at Silk, I said, hey, man, I just got out the fans a few years ago, man. I ain't joined this shit. You, know <laughs> you ain't messing with him? I said, I'm not joining this shit, man. I, I, man, I seen so many crews, especially from his town, from Detroit, the Pony Boys. I was in jail with all them niggas, man. Bush Lewis, all them niggas. I was in there with them niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? So I seen how the feds, you know, locked all them up, right? And then so, you know, I wasn't with it, you know what I'm saying? Like that, on that level. And then, you know, Big Meat, you know, I said, man, you know, I said, I said, man, that shit going. He said, yeah, man, you know, you gotta just live your life. And then, you know, I sold them two pimp cups. You know, Kaiser oh, yeah? sell the pimp cups for Debbie, you know. You know, Meach, you know, he gave me four thousand dollars for two wow. cups. I mean, it was just like he just reached we was at uh, Justin sitting down eating. And the little bald head dude, I forget his name, but I know he's from, he's he one of reach Meach right, right here, man. It wasn't J Bo, the little dude. Uh, damn, I can't think of his name. But he gave me 4000 And he said, I said, well, give me, uh, where you want me to take him to, Meach? He said, just bring him back to Justin's. So I brought him to Justin's and I set him up there. And, and I said, this for Big Meach. You know what I mean? He was just a baller, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the last time I seen Big Meach, we was in Miami. And, uh, uh, he said something similar what he said. I think he knew he was going down. He said something to the fact that, uh, yeah, man, nigga got to get it while he live. He got to live how he get it. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know, whatever happened, happened. At that time, I heard he, they was getting hot and that the feds might be on their case. So, you know, I, uh, you know, seen the Phantoms. They had all this stuff, and they had moved to Miami. Next thing I know, I seen, I'm watching, you know, news. the internet and the news. He's, he got indicted. But, you know, one thing I liked about Big Meech, you know, he took he took a plea to save his niggas, you know, from having to, you know, stand Deal with before a judge. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think that that's a boss move, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that the fact that he was willing to go to prison just to keep from putting y'all on the stand. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna plead so y'all don't have to y'all don't have to stand up and I I think that's what uh, you know, pretty much reason would save uh the BMF and why it's still successful today and why they got the BMF special. Because he made a pro move. He was just a smart dude. Yeah. Meech, Big Meech probably knew he was going to take a cop. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he just knew. He, he knew what he was doing. He knew the consequences of his behavior. And I personally heard him say that out of his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I know another time. <laughs> I tell this story. Everybody get mad at me. Cuckoo cow. <laughs> and, uh, and and we all went to. It was a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hotel. I think it was called the SOE or something. like It was, it was right next to uh, Lenox Mall. Okay. You know, it was called something else. So Big Meech had a, a private party, and uh, we went to the party. And when we got to the party, it was weed in there. So Big Meech said, all the weed you can drink, they give you singles when you come in there. So, you know, I don't tip. You know what I'm saying? So I put my singles in my pocket. <laughs> and I grabbed some weed and put some weed in my pocket. And Cuckoo Cow and uh, my band Cash Ball, they laughed at me. I said, man, I don't smoke, so I'm going to get this to my folks. I said, I don't tip, so I'm going to keep my money. You know what I'm saying, I man? You know, that's just, what, that's just how they do it. He just, you know, everybody know I'm not lying. Anybody listen to this, you know, if they was there at the party, they had stacks of bills and all type of women dancing, you know, but that don't that don't excite me. So that wasn't my party, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just, you know, coming with somewhere. And then uh, they gave you, the weed was just in a jar, big ass bowl. All, all, I mean, he was a player, man. Real you know? player. Uh, we was at, uh, what's that club called over there on uh, P Street? It used to be next to Car Wash. They changed it. I don't know what it's called. But uh, we was in there, and uh, uh, Jeezy, Big Meech, all of them was in there. Man, them dudes had like 100 bottles of nothing but Cristal. Wow. That shit was like four, five hundred a bottle back then. They wasn't tripping. Man, them boys was, man. You, you ain't never seen nothing like that before? Man. I mean, you know, since that? My brother was with me one time, and they was tipping. And my brother in, in uh, Cash Ball, Cash Ball, he one of the ballers out of our city, you know what I'm saying? He was getting a lot of money, but I, I never seen him be shocked. He looking at, 
He looking at me it's like, damn. He said, man, these motherfuckers got some money. You know, he never seen it, but he seen it. My brother Marvin, he was there. <coughs> he seen it. Yeah, shout out to Marvin. Yeah, we got the HHF Awards coming. Uh, I want to uh, nominate you too for I'm an coming. award. It's called the Hip Hop Fraternity Awards. It's uh, April 15th, and the pre awards were Ugly Money. <coughs> Write that down. On, on, shout out to Ugly to Money. April 18th? 15th. A- April 15th. 15th. Yeah, we're going to nominate y'all for an uh, uh, award. And we're gonna nominate, you know, uh, Carlos Miller. I need to get a drop for yeah, you too. Yeah, rock with Carlos yeah, Miller. Yeah, Carlos did his drop. DC did his drop. Chico Bean did his drop. I need to drop from you, sure. Beehive, and all the other podcasts. And we're gonna see who wins. Man, I'm supposed to win DJ that DJ Screen. I'm yeah. the underdog. I'm yeah. supposed to yeah, win that thing. We're gonna give you the hottest new. Uh, I ain't gonna say we're gonna give you. We're gonna nominate the you. The hottest new podcast, podcast to come out independent. independent. Where is this gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be in Atlanta, in Georgia. Atlanta. Put, put that but down so I'll be there. If you if you go on YouTube and see the last year, it was really really big. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Pastor Troy was there. I remember uh, he was supposed to be here that time. We were trying to get him here, but he's you had that to do, so you had to go. You had yeah. forgotten about it, and you had to do that. I remember really? that. Yeah, that was Damn. that's that it was really big. It was like the BET Awards, and that's what we do at the Hip Hop Fraternity. You know, we try to encourage young black men, in particular, you know, to be self sufficient and independent. You know practice autonomy because you know a lot of people say they're independent but independent mean you own something you know mm-hmm. what I mean and I think that that's why you know we so successful because we own our own radio station we own our own award show we own our own social media we own our own magazine and our own clothing line our HHF uh, publishing you know HHF uh, uh, light, uh, literary agency you know we 100% independent you know we got lawyers uh, we got accountants we got all that stuff on our team we got 4,000 members and we're in 25 cities. So, you know, I encourage all people, if you're not a member of the Hip Hop Fraternity, join The Hip Hop Fraternity at thehiphopfraternity.com. If you're looking to open up a chapter, you can reach me. You can reach me directly through my Instagram. DM me at realpimpkin underscore, and I would definitely oblige you. Man, I want to ask you about uh, something that uh, <clears throat> here happened here recently. Uh, and I don't know if you know him, but you, you, me and you, we met. We, me and you were down in Memphis together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually was in Tunica, Mississippi, but you got to go through Memphis to get over yeah. that little hall. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I'm, uh, Gangsta Boo, you know, and and R.I.P. to Gangsta Boo. But did you ever have any dealings with with her? Man, did I have dealings with her? That was my home girl. Okay. If you look at the movie I gave you, The Ghetto Streets of Zeke Street, in part two, that's Gangsta Boo at the party. She had all my parties. She went wow. to my party at Pure. She went to my party at, uh, was it Park, Central Park? Whatever the club is, it's so many years. And, you know, Gangsta Boo was like, Ken, I didn't know you had it jumping like this. So we had a party, right? And, you know, my city loved me. So when I throw a party, like, we had, they had to call a fire monster because it was like a concert. Yeah. The club only hold like a thousand people, but it was like 20,000 people. It was people all on the streets. And uh, Gangsta Boo and, and uh, 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 what's his name? Bum B and. Uh, uh, what's the boy name uh, from Mississippi? Uh, David Banner. David Banner. All of them was there, you know. So we promoted it just as the Pippin' Ken party, but people came because it was a concert and Gangsta Boo and all of them was there. The next party we did was with the Brat and Gangsta Boo. Wow. So all of them come to my party, they all came for free, you know. It was just everybody showed me love, man. You know, Gangsta Boo was one of those individuals that showed me the most love. You know what I'm saying? Me, uh, matter of fact, uh, her, Shout out to uh, my homegirl, Smokey. Her and uh, Gangsta Boo, it came together, man. They was just coming, you know, to show me some love. And, uh, you know, she was uh, she was a, a, a good person, man. I think I talked to her maybe about two years ago. Somehow we ended up on the phone together. I don't know if she was around somebody, and they said, Pippin Ken. Mm-hmm. She said, that's my homeboy. But, uh, you know, she came to all my parties. She's in the movie, The Ghetto Streets, Executive Street, uh, the CD, too. So you know, I mean, we yeah, we got uh, well, we, yeah. I mean, then we was in Atlanta. We used to be together all the time too, mm-hmm. you know, because she came down here in Atlanta, and she well, she came down to Atlanta, and uh, we hung out a lot, you know. Uh, Smokey, all us, you know, Atlanta was a small community. Yeah, all the rappers, you know, we just hung out together. But that was my home girl, man. You know, uh, did they ever find out how she? Some it's people say drugs. Some people we these is all alleged, you know. Everybody say fitting all on everything that happened now. So even Big Scar, R.I.P. to him too, who died three mm. weeks before she died. 
Like yeah. this is this this stuff is ripping through our communities, man. If that be the case, because yeah. I don't, you know, I don't really mess around or nothing, but I just hate to see it. But it's a different world than where we come from. But you know, that's why I don't do drugs, man, because. I don't want a nigga to, my biggest fear is a nigga give me some bad drugs. That's what I be saying. You know what I'm saying? So if I wanted to do some cocaine or I wanted to shoot some cocaine or shoot some heroin and it's got some crazy stuff in it, I can die. That's so right. So these guys are not chemists. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand how chemistry works. So, you know, you putting your hands in someone who don't have the skill set to actually administer drugs, you know, and, uh, I think that a lot of our young people, man, you know, they got a lot of trauma, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, and they just trying to escape, you know, and people go through, some, you know, mental illness is real. It's a lot of mental illness in our community. You know, if an army man go to Iraq or he go to, say, uh, Afghanistan or somewhere where they have war at, he come back, he needs some type of special treatment. They got to give him counseling. What about the brothers and sisters that, you know, seeing these people get ripped with these uh, uh, Dracos and these uh, these hundred rounds every day. You know, I mean, guns is popping in our hood every day. So it, if it was good for the goose, it's good for the gander. So it's got to be going on in our community as well if it's going on overseas in war. So, you know, we in a war zone. You know, wow. the, some of the guns that our young people got today is just crazy. So I think a, a easy escape is drugs. So I think yeah. a lot of our young people, they use drugs, you know, to escape. And uh, you know, a lot of people say weed is a, a a gateway to a lot of other drugs. You know, sometimes we just don't do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and people got to go to that next level. And when you get to the point where weed is no longer good, and you go to the next level, then I think that's when you're in peril. And I think, and I think that's what happened. You know, when a lot of you know, especially celebrities. I mean, if you go back in celebrity dome, you know, Michael uh, Michael Jackson. What was that? P purple fall. Purple fall, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Prince, he alleged Prince. it. You know, Elvis Presley. Yeah. You know, uh, man, the list go on, man. Just drug overdose after drug overdose because it's a lot of burden. You know, and then, you know, me being a celebrity, you know, uh, people, under, they say, Ken, why are you always selling DVDs? Why are you always in the hood? Because they keep me sane. You know what I'm saying? If I had to go by being Pimpin' Ken and I had to meet that standard of Pimpin' Ken, then that would be a hard bar to reach because you ain't gonna always be pimping Ken. Uh, 50 Cent told me something. We was at the uh, PIMP video. We was in the back because you know a Bishop and Snoop Nam was over there. Mm -hmm. I was in a uh, pimp's. I mean, uh, 50 Cent's uh, dressing room, and he told me. I said, Yeah, yeah, man. I said, You know, I said that book of uh, pimpology killed him. He, he looked at me. You know, at 50 Cent, look, he said, Ken. He said, You only get one time to be that nigga. You know what I'm saying? I mean, then he got to figure out something to be a nigga, something else to be a nigga in again. So what he was saying is like, you know, even with the get rich or die and trying, I guess he was saying, I'm only one, I'm only 50 cent one time. I can never relive get rich or die trying. I can never relive pimps up a hose down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but a lot of people try to relive those moments and they try to stay in that zone. And what happens is that zone do no, no longer exists and that individual end up going crazy or end up yeah. looking for escapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes drugs is the best escape go for people because it takes you out of your moment for now. But once the drugs go down, you got to go, and you got to revamp, you got to do it again, and you got to re-up your high. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why I stay, that's why you're always going to see me selling DVDs. You're always going to see Staying me humble. walking around normal. You're going to always see me talking to bums. I'm going I'm to always pull over if I got some dollars and give them some bums some money because that's how I stay sane. And that's why everybody else is going crazy and, and having an overdose, and I'm still here. No, and I agree with that because when you look, people... They can't handle like a lot of times, like even the character, the act actors. Well, whether it was uh, what was that boy name Arnold and uh, what was his real name Gary Coleman, mm -hmm. did uh, them guys and Willis and uh, the girl that was on there. They could never, and even even JJ, like they could never get past those characters because they yeah. were so big. Yeah. They they kind of overshadowed their 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 person. But Pimps Up Holds Down had a billion views. Same thing. That's what I'm saying. It could have did the same thing. I'm just showing you how you were able to move on and maneuver and other people get get stopped, get and caught. I'm, and I'm giving people the remedy. Still go to Walmart. Stay home. You know, go go to Target. You know what I'm saying? Go go to your cousin's house. Go sit down with your kin folks. You know what I mean? That's gonna keep you 
from tripping, you know what I mean, and, and start seeing shit and hearing voices because that's what happens, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I stay humble, you know, and people laugh. You know, that some people laugh. They say, man, nigga still selling DVDs. Don't nobody have DVD. I don't care if they have DVDs. When they don't buy the DVD, I say, man, buy it like it's a Jordan, man. Put it on the shelf like it's a collector's item. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, I'm excited for you. We're going to take a picture, man. I know you ain't got no DVD player, but that's all right, little homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, talk shit, they laugh, and they go in their pocket and give me $20. That's hard. And I sometimes, you know, people be like, Man, I ain't gonna buy that shit, Pip. I'm just gonna give you a donation. I said, ain't no nation like a donation. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you something, man. Like, uh, when you think about just the way that 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 when you look at the rappers, like like Takeoff gets killed. You know, late night. It's a, a it's a some say dice game. Alleged. All this is alleged. Hanging out late at night, drinking, everybody kicking it. Which that's what we do. We done it. Um. And then somebody of this magnitude, because anybody can die, but to see a, a guy on that level who they say never dealt, did nothing, didn't talk to people, just to get caught up in a situation like that. What, when you heard about that, what did you think? Well, you know, this is nothing to do with takeoff or nothing to do with the people. RIP takeoff. Alleged people, but, but when you gamble, and I used to gamble all the time, that shit come to territory. You know what right. I mean? You know, when, you, when people lose their money, and you know, you got players on the set, you know what I'm saying? I mean, people they, you know, don't respect the game. They might say something and you know, shit can pop off, you know what I mean? Or if you win a nigga money, you know what I'm saying, a nigga might say, Yeah, man, nigga won my money, I'm gonna take that shit back. He'll call his homeboys and somebody get killed and robbed. You know, that's just part of you know, in takeoff it was a very unfortunate situation, but it happens every day in the hood. Yeah. You know, we just looking at the takeoff situation, but that that scenario Scenario, it, it happens all the time, but you know it's it's tragic that you know that it happened, but you know, I mean God don't make no mistakes, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, sometimes, man, in every every lesson, there's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so I mean, a lot of brothers and sisters that's out there that's famous, they're gonna learn something from this. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna be educated. Like I said, you know, if you drop, <coughs> you know, like like. Like Tina always said, if you drop your books, you lose your lessons. You know what I'm saying? So, so if you drop your books, you lose your lessons. It's another one of life lessons. And, you know, it's it's tragic because now it, it opened up another can of worms. We don't yeah. know what the retaliation going to be. You know, we don't know how the people on that side are going to feel. And we don't know how the people on the other side are going to be like, yeah, well, you know, bring it on. You know, so it just perpetuates, you know, a cycle of violence that is perpetuated in the African-American community, and I think a lot of young people have the propensity for violence, and they don't want to acclimate themselves to something positive that would change the narrative that's creating the situation in our in our ghettos and, the, and throughout our communities. You know, so me personally, you know, I, I try to pretty much institute and inoculate and, you know, pretty much uh, galvanize the young people with the hip-hop fraternity you know, something that's constructive. And I can probably say that the hip-hop attorney have a two and a half years of no violence. Okay. <clears throat> so when you, okay, here, here's the deal. When you when you look at, and, and we got to get these pimp stories, you know, got to get these pimp stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we always, you know, I'm, I, he just had a birthday. So with him just having a birthday, you know what I'm saying, you know, I had a, uh, I had Mr. Lee on here. I had a Bobo on here. Mm -hmm. I had uh, He's a Leo on here. Mm -hmm. I brought all them boys over here, man, and we just had a good time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about pimp, you know. Uh, and, man, let me bring Valentino up in here. He got to come over here and sit down. He, he getting ready. But, 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 you know, when you think about, like, like to be real, like, pimp birthday, it came up. We'll go back into that. Um, um. I always get a pimp story, you know, from you every time you come over here. But I was talking about, and these people, man, everybody have the same, uh, the same thing going, man. What's up, baby? What's up, man? How y'all doing, doing? Man, how you doing, man? All right, what's up, Look out, man. Look out. Come on, sit down, man. All right. But man, uh, we had a good time, man. You been watching the show? Yeah, I've been watching. Yeah, <laughs> you you got to talk right into that mic. Okay. I need headset on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and put it on. That, that make us feel like we all together. Right. But really, man, it's good to see you, man. It's good to be seen. Man, listen, man. I've been proud of what I've been hearing about you. I appreciate it. You know, that. I listen to the streets. You know me. 
Right. So I was right. like, man, you're doing a good thing, man. Open up opportunity for people. Definitely. When I see, and, and, and say this Valentino, man, let me stop right now, man. Let me pay homage to this guy right here, man, who been holding it down in the city for a long time. See, this is when the real ones start stepping up. Y'all know I've been around. A lot of people don't even know. They be like, man, right. who is that dude, man? The real ones gonna be like, that's he. Yeah. <laughs> but but the ones who don't, they gonna be like, man, I don't know, man. So I, just... To be honest, thank you for coming on the show. Man. I appreciate the opportunity, man. But you want to break him down, or you want you, you want because you don't want nobody to be in this everything. Yeah, because I don't know who <laughs> that, I've heard of your name before. Right. He tell me stories, right. but I don't know who you are. Right. So, and I'm sure some of our viewers don't. So, I'd like to know about you. you born and raised in Dallas? No, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. I knew that. I knew really. That. Yeah. So, but you've been in Dallas for a very long time. Twenty one years. Twenty. Oh, yes. that's. 21 years okay mm -hmm. so what moved you to dallas uh really um it wasn't a a choice it was more about force um got caught up on a situation um on the highway back mm. in um 99 leaving new orleans um uh, got caught up you know dealing and uh just knew what the city of memphis was about mm -hmm. and um when i got it when i when i was released i just didn't go home yeah i stayed here in dallas Cause you probably got caught up right back into the same stuff. Of course, stuff. me. You, I didn't go home. Me. <clears throat> Definitely, uh, uh, Memphis is a rough city. It's been rough and it's getting rougher. But you really, know, uh, but I knew maybe like six people here in Dallas, Texas, and uh, but I just knew being here, um, the population, you know, was a lot, way bigger than Memphis. Yeah, cause you could have went to Atlanta. Yeah, uh, uh, but Dallas. What I like about Dallas, opposed to a lot of other cities, um, diver diversity. Okay. Yeah. Um, the. Um, one thing I like about this city, the people and the politicians in the city of Dallas, they believe in investing back into the city. Mm. So it creates opportunity. True. True. Yeah, so uh, opportunities um, Hold on. definitely present themselves <laughs> being here in Dallas, Texas. At the time, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But, but um, you know, um, it, it um, eventually it um, worked it, out. It How old were you when, you when that happened? <clears throat> about 20 uh, something? No, no, I'm 53 now. Oh, yes. okay. So yep, by so 30, like so. 30s, yeah, my 30s, yeah. Man, you're yeah. older than mommy he, does, man. You look, you look yeah. young. It ain't, no. how old, it ain't how old you is. It's how cold I'm older than is. King hey. <laughs> I'm older than King Tuck, so I know. <laughs> so just be real, man. When I when, like like when I met you and everything, I always seen you. We was always, it'd be at Big T or something. Mm -hmm. and, or or we'd be out at a night scene or whatever. Me and my boy, man, I'm always going to speak to him, show right, him homage. Right. Just like I see you, I'm always, hey, man, like, like, it's just a respect thing, man, right. you know, especially when you're older like like right, us. Right. You know what I'm saying? We done seen a lot of nights out there. Yes, I was sir. just talking to him about takeoff situation and gambling and hanging right. out late at night. And when I was talking to him, he was just, you know, just talk, we were just talking about the fact of how things can go out there when you're gambling. That whole spirit, it's a different aura, man, and, and, and it could go any way. You know, so uh, losers. Yeah. One People don't I, like to see you take their money. Yeah. Well, one thing about it, I, my take on this, like, you have to understand the value of accessibility. Yeah. You know, so as you grow in value, you have to protect your assets. You know, uh, uh, um, like I remember God when he was getting 1500 a show. He's getting a, like 125 a show now. So people that had access to him, they don't have the same access. That's right. And people might think you're being funny, but you know, you as you grow, you grow in value. So people don't have the same access. And as you, as you can see, God, he started to hang around people that made him better. So when you hang around people that makes you a better individual, then you start seeing a better version of yourselves. That's real. Some people don't want to leave the hood. You know, some people always want to embrace the hood where they came from, you know, and um, they always want to show what it is that they've gotten out the game to the people in the hood. But like Tupac said a long time, you know, people poor, they rob you, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and, it, and it's, it don't be personal. It's just uh, another means to survive. If, if it's an opportunity, that they're gonna take. They're gonna take the advantage of. Uh, Absolutely. You know, putting themselves. In. It's always the people we know. Every time a person get robbed, set up, it's somebody that they know. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> man, when I see uh -huh. you, you bring back memories. Man, I start thinking about Nelly and everything. Just all the stuff that you done been right. involved in. Right. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like I know because I know the history because I follow you. Because yeah, uh, at the end of the day, I'm proud. You know I what I'm saying? Of what man. any accomplishments that a brother that look like me get done. You know what right. I'm saying? So when I see, you know, when I think about Nelly, they just had him in the news where yeah, they were saying say, he had a trans or, 
they they were saying it was like he was on something or, or something mm -hmm. because he was performing and he kind of tweaked out a little bit. Right. You don't never know, man. With every, I'm gonna tell you something, and y'all might think I'm tripping because I'm going somewhere totally different with this. The other week, I don't know what it was. It seemed like someone was in the air. You weren't in Texas, but it seemed like people get. I had a head a headache, and it was like a cold. And I called a lot of people that had the said. same yeah, thing, night, bro. Last night I did. I, I, it, it was a I'm, headache that's why, that's why I'm and a cold. This. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I don't know if people sending something out in the air, bro. I don't know what it is. But it's a little different than when I was younger. You know, being 50-something yeah, years old, you start true. thinking back like, damn, we didn't have this problem back right, then. That's true. You, you don't think the same no, way? No, no, I, I, I totally feel you. You know, uh, even the food is different. Back, exactly. Like back then. We, when we ate watermelon, we had seeds. Yeah. So it's now genetically modified. You That's know? right. But people, we're not, we, we're so oblivious to what's going on. It's like, it's subliminal. It's right in our face, but we don't pay no attention to it. You know, until it starts to impact us. You know, so even we, back then and <laughs> today, it had seeds. But now, since the um, the rappers has pushed this uh, narrative about no no seeds, you know, so you don't get the benefits that you once got. Yeah, you, you, know? you when you hit it, they used to pop. Y'all yeah. don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The old cats go, they used to pop, pop, pop. Man, you I hear never it. Been <laughs> well, I never, I never I ain't either, weed. but my daddy used to have some yeah. homegrown, nigga. I remember. Right. You know what I'm saying? I smoked weed one time, man. Well, maybe twice. And uh, one time I was with, I know I know, I know, know my my folks now back there. They go, remember, so I smoked weed at, uh, you know, I was with my lady friends, you know, my workers, right? And uh, they said, hit the weed, daddy. said, I hit the weed. My heart's <laughs> So I went into the hospital. And when I get to the hospital, they said, what's wrong with you? I said, I smoked some weed. And they, the nurses started laughing at me, man. And I was about, maybe, I had to be about 30. And the, and the first time I smoked weed, I was a young kid. And my partner, JD, who I've been fucking with for 50 years, or 40 years for sure, uh, he 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 smoked the weed, so he told me to smoke weed. So we smoked weed, and I went home because we did it outside, and then we had bikes. So I went inside the house, and I went in there. I'm listening to the water, and I put my head in the water. The water get all on my head, and I went. I said, "Mama, I'm bleeding." She said, "Boy, you get your ass out of here." He said, "I'm gonna beat this shit out of you. Take your ass in your room. What you what you been doing, right?" And, I, I was so embarrassed, man. I said, I never do that because, you know, I was just listening to yeah, the water. Yeah, paranoid. Everything <laughs> becomes crystal clear. No, I put my head in the water, uh, Miss Jamaica, and the water was on my face. Right. I thought it was blood. blood. <laughs> Nigga, I, I didn't even look in the yeah. mirror. I, I, I was too high, man. And and, 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 and uh, I never, those are the only two incidents that I would smoke weed. Yeah, I never and the again. Mo But the most embarrassing part was to smoke weed in front of your girls who you supposed to be in charge of, who yeah. you supposed to be the same yeah. one. And I went to the hospital, and it's crazy though. It's a funny thing too. After I went to the hospital, man, the nurse that one of the nurses that ended up uh, taking care of me, she was laughing at me, and she ended up getting down with me. It was crazy. Oh, dang. So, so you know, I, I, you know, I, I ain't go, I ain't gonna never say the pimp guy. I just say Gerard, right? So wow. I said Gerard that hooked me up, man, with this hoe, right? <laughs> And I just flipped it. I said, oh, boy, I said, you going to hell, man. It was just crazy man. stuff like that, man. You know, I mean, you know, I, but that 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 precluded me from doing and, and I don't drink neither because I can't drink. Yeah, I, I'm I an Indian. Now, my grandmama, I think she 80% uh, Indian. <clears throat> so I'm Indian. When I drink, I want to fight. You know what I'm <laughs> I want to fight. I'm like, you know, if you look at me crazy, I think you, you're trying to challenge me, you know. So my daddy was the same way. My daddy had a lot of fights, so... I'm no, I'm drug free, alcohol free by default. Me too. <laughs> hey, so I, I got both of y'all in here. I'm going back into my pimp phase. Pimp C, uh, that last I choose you. I seen you in the video. Right. Y'all both was in there. Y'all got to talk to me about that day now that I got both of y'all here, so I I'm can tell if somebody telling the truth around here. I'm letting you know, him tell the truth. He, he so got, how he, was how was it just that day and and, and everything? Um, I know that was was that the last time that you uh, seen Pimp like uh, in? Yeah, that was the last time. So just uh, let just run me down through there on how that day was because that would be you know. It was a fun filled day, man. We had a ball. Uh, me and Ken, we went to the mall. We shopped. Uh, everybody knew us, you know, um, because I have people in LA. Yeah. So we uh, allowed uh, one of the guys we know to um, get us, you know together for the video. Um, it was just a, a fun field day. Um, wasn't nobody um, on their star, you know, uh, you know, plateau, but everybody's just being, you know, um, cool, cordial. Uh, Pimp was a good dude, man, real good dude. Uh, it, uh, 
this is my take of Pimp. Pimp had a good heart. You know what I'm saying? Real good heart. Sometimes he would say some things, but he would, like, take it to the extreme. But I think once he got somewhere and allowed his better nature to surface, he would think about what he said, then he want to make, you know, the, make the amends right. You know, but uh, Pimp was a good dude. Never showed me nothing different. I was introduced to him through Ken. Yeah. Know? So that was a good opportunity. How many takes was it at that table that day, y'all, when y'all was at that table doing that with Pimp? It was, it was a of, few. Was it a one it take? Or it was a few. It was one take because I remember <laughs> he had the mink on. He had the white, white he mink like, on. He was like, man, y'all hurry up. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but like I say, uh, it was just, uh, it, it wasn't uh, Brian Barber. Um, he, he directed, he did a good job directing that video. Uh, and, uh, uh, but we was allowed to be ourselves, man. You know, uh, yeah. you know, we didn't feel no type of way, you know, um, yeah. we was in our own skin, you know. And so, nobody was thinking that that was so, the last so, video. So, in the, so nah. Pim called me E and he said, "Say man, get the guys together." So, you know, me, me and Valentino, we 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 have been to L.A. plenty of times, like he said, you know, doing different things. So, first person came to my mind was Valentino, but we had to, you know, call Bishop and then get all yeah. them because it wouldn't have been right without them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got all of them there, and uh, you know, the thing that I didn't know. Is that Outcast was gonna be there? You didn't know that, no. So when I seen Outcast, I'm like, man, this shit is big. I yeah. said, this this is so. At this time, they was the hottest group yeah, in the world. Yeah, you know, and that's <clears throat> that was the the shocking part to me. The Pimp C, the the Valentino, the, all the players, yeah, and Triple Six Bobby, all them. I see them all the time. You know what I'm saying? Me, but to see uh, and David Banner was there as well. I see him all the time. But to see. Okay. Outcast, that was amazing. It was Star Set. It had T Pain was there. T Pain was there. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was, he he was, was there. Preacher, wasn't he? he was a preacher. No, he was the chorus guy. He was in the. Uh, oh, the, he, he was the chorus guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, he was the choir director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that yeah. like I said, that, that that and that thing did it. It did numbers and got yeah. Grammys and all kinds. Man, of I stuff, think man. that thing is. Uh, I think we had my. I know I get. I get publishing from it. It's a lot of millions, you know. So really? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a double CD. They did some millions. And, uh, man, it was crazy, made though. Made number one. Uh, yeah. Got an award for it at the uh, BET Awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It yeah. made no. I oh, seen yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, that was a Shout different. out to Corey Moe uh, out of Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey Moe. I talked to him. Big Lonnie, Big L. Yeah, big yeah, yeah, Big L. Yeah. He's he was mm -hmm. in there. Uh-huh. It's a lot Man, of like, you guys, man, to see, like, like, like I said, to see the run, like you, you being from Memphis, uh, tri Triple Six Mafia, man. I always ask, and I and and nobody can tell me the other day because I was the, I asked. I think I did ask. I asked uh, Mr. Lee and him the other day, like how did Pimp, you know, and Project Pad and all them people get so knitted? Because they, you could tell Pimp had a relationship with them. They music, right. they vibe together. Think about it. Right. That like, sipping on some scissor and all that stuff. It just seemed like they, he connected with those guys. Hey, I was in discussion <clears throat> with uh, three of my artists, Murder Man, Cash, and uh, H2O. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, you know, they, they part of hip-hop fraternity. I was in a conversation with them, and we was asking the same question about, you know, the music of Memphis. And what we said is that, you know, Memphis got a, they got a quick wit, quick wit. You know what I'm saying? They very like old school. You know, like they it seemed like, you know, the old school players gave them cliches that that, that they and you hear, you know, it in uh money bag money bag uh yo music, you hear it in finesse two times. Like you what know, you we, said. Like what you said and I remember like uh like a murder man was saying, you know, he was saying, uh he said, Yeah, man, you know, when he said, man, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem we do. He said, they, we've been saying that a long time <laughs> in the South. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But, you know, I guess when they say it's cool when they do it, it's cool when niggas up East do it, you know, and niggas <laughs> in New York do it, but it's a problem we do it. You know, and that's what that referred to. You know what I'm saying? And, and Pip used to say, yeah, man, we don't drive. He said, we don't, we don't, we don't whip something. But he said, we got a, a book. We don't we don't do book packs. We uh, whip grain and, and drag Cadillacs. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's just that country slang that I think that makes that music so powerful. Because because when we was pimping back in the day, it was they it was the way they talk and the gold teeth. They used to make us laugh in the Jerry curl. Yeah, because you know the Memphis the Jerry dude, curl. Yeah, Memphis dudes used to wear Jerry curls, gold teeth, and talk really funny. But they was but everything they say was mother wit. You know what I mean? So they some you know it's a lot of. I would say folklore passed on to the children. Even though you got people this to this day, they still have that wise crack, that yeah. wisdom. You can hear the wisdom in the music. 
And I think that that's why a lot of people are gravitating to the mythic song because it's so, it's not just, you know, <clears throat> drill or it's not, you know, trap. It's, it's you know, I mean, right. uh, what's his name? Uh, Finesse Two Time. If you listen to him over the course of a period of time, he said a lot of smart things, a lot of intelligent things, whether you want to regard it or not. But He know. popped off. He popped off. I, I didn't see it coming. And I heard once I start researching it, I seen the, 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 the before. I mean, Gutter TV came on here and he was telling me that he was in the, party where where I think it was 28 people got shot nobody died and finesse two time he ended up going to prison right and then to see him come home and to see the success that he's been able to mm -hmm. capture I didn't see none of this coming he's talented he got it though he got he, it he's been having it that's Amen. what I'm saying. You know that, yeah. Because you from Memphis, uh, I and mean, maybe you tapped in. But I'm telling you, when I start research, I didn't know nothing about it. But then when I looked, I'm like, this nigga bad. Yeah. Me neither, man. You didn't either. The, you know what? What he, what he got I me? Told Ken. You told Ken. I told Ken. <laughs> but, but hey, but he, you know, you know, he he the one that really put me on Memphis. That we'll be in. Uh, what was that place we used to be at? That the white dude from uh, Mississippi had little strip club. Uh, it was it's go it's over there by. Ecstasy, you go. Oh, uh, it's not Black Orchid. Yeah, it wasn't uh, Black Orchid. It was. It uh, might have been something like that. But yeah. a dime and a sun. King, Queen, King of Dime, Queen of Dime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like King that. of Dime. So, yeah. so uh, I was in there, and, and, and uh, every time uh, the dude Money Bag Yo would rap, Valentino would quote his songs. He'd be like, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, I mean, you know, he he kind of got me on the Memphis rap. You know what I'm saying? Because he said it. You know, I know he's a player. I said, you know, he's he's a boss. You know, he's a businessman now. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, he's from the streets. I said, you know, I, you know, I said it's it's amazing to see somebody like Valentino, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rapper. Or, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying? It got to be so, something to it. So I right. said, I start, That's when I stopped paying more attention to rap. And he's like, kid, he cold, he cold. He would, you know. And then he said, he said, <laughs> Valentino said, I'm gonna do a rap too, kid. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. I said, you're it on. I said, Valentina, break it on, man. <laughs> Let me see you promote it, man. Everything the game, nothing to lose. <laughs> so, hey, but one day we was at Half Shell in Memphis, and uh, Zach Randolph and um, Head, which they are the CEOs of Endless. That's okay. A bag signed to. Okay. And they called me Burr in Memphis. Okay. Like, Burr, take um, this CD out. This is our New Orleans money bag, you know. And um, they said, take it back to Dallas. And uh, brought it back, and which I didn't. Judge it, but when I once I put it in the um, the CD player, I was I was taken. You, you know? knew it was good, and I knew I was gonna push it. You know, uh, I came here and um, got it in the clubs, got it on the radio stations. You know, uh, uh, really, and people was liking it, man. You know, that's hard. Yeah, but you know, I got a song <clears throat> with uh, what's the name MJG. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying uh, a ball. The movie that I got, they in my movie. So I always, you know, I always was dealing with the Memphis scene. You know, I talked to a ball. That was my partners. I, you know, when I was in Memphis, uh, I think uh, MJG had a, a studio on Lamar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was, in, it was crazy. I was like, I thought, because, you know, rap, I thought everybody had millions of dollars, you know. So it was like in a house or something. It was weird, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? So he's like, man, come to the studio. So I think we finna come to a big studio. <laughs> Country, I love and, it. And, 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 you know, that's what made me respect uh, MJG, man. You know, he, he would call me, man. We'd be talking all night. So I've been down with the Memphis scene, but I don't know the new guy. I met them through Valentino. Valentino, like, man, how proud are you to see how the Memphis, the, the whole movement, because it's peaking right now. Right. Like, when you think of the South, Memphis, you know, from even when Pooh Shiesty was out. Right. Like, they was killing the game. They still killing the game. Uh, yo, yeah, man, even Dolph and his, the whole mm -hmm. thing, that, that whole movement. What right. do you, what do you, what, did you ever see that coming? Well, Let, like let's I said, be it's, real. It's a lot of talent out of Memphis. We go all the way back to, uh, um, Endo and Blunt. It's always been talent there uh, in, in Memphis, you know. But uh, not like now. Like yeah. it's so much. It's been built think, up. Uh, one thing about it, I just think that everything is a process. Every city has its turn. New York, they had their turn. Yeah. Um, Houston, you know. I remember Houston. You couldn't touch yeah. Houston. So, Man, that tip it on yeah. four four. No, that was yeah. out. You had Switch. Uh, so, well, you had Switch in house. You had yeah, uh, Rap a lot and. You, you just had, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, what's them other boy's name? That e probably e had on Rick Shop. Right, Rick yeah. Shop. All of them are bubbling so, at the same time. Yeah, big Mo, so uh, Paul, everybody, has the, Paul, everybody has their air. Paul, Paul, yeah. You know, uh, 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 but I think with Memphis and Atlanta, they maybe four to six hours from each other. Correct. So, so that's a base. And uh, <clears throat> like I say, once you build relationships and you understand the politics of the game, you know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, it's like riding a bike, man. Once you, you get it, you got it. And then, you know, people got an eye for that talent. You but know, you know, 
Go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I want to say something about Memphis, right? Now, a lot of people didn't peep it. I was telling him about that. Uh, we was on the phone. We was up about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning talking about it. I said, man, you know what? I said, what Gotti did mm -hmm. he when did. he gave uh, that boy Moneybag Yo that cash, he changed the artists. narrative of yeah. the game. But he do that every time. I just but, seen yeah. Bag do his new artist that but, way. But, but, but listen, listen, really? listen, yes. E, listen, E. You know, I didn't have a lot of money. You had a lot of money. We know we don't never touch the money. It's always numbers on the screen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a, a lot of deals I do, I'm doing it on the screen or I'm doing it with a credit card or I'm doing it through a transaction. To actually put the money on the table, I think that that's when he was able to really get the attention of the world. And then, you know, he did it with Black Youngster. He did it with Gorilla. And, you know, I think I was telling him to me. Yes, he ex yeah, yeah, ESTG and uh, uh, Big, Big Boogie. So I say Gotti, to me, exemplify the new CEO of hip hop. And, and I, I said, no disrespect to Jay-Z now, but the way Gotti doing it is the best way to approach the music game because now you got young people, they seeing the actual money and it's not just numbers on the screen. I think when you put the numbers on the screen, you know, I mean, for most young black men, I think you confuse the situation, you know, but when they can actually see the capital. Touch the money and the jury right there and they yeah. get it. I seen him uh, early on when he did that with Slowbug. So I'm friends with Slowbug now uh, with uh, uh, them guys, man. And I seen him count 300000 on the internet with, mm -hmm. with them boys in New York. That's how you do it. And I seen him just counting money. Just but, playing. And, and I seen, I can't lie, I seen Birdman do that early on too. Like, right. these boys was doing this. This is what but, they were doing. But he was Birdman. Yeah, yeah. I think he was. He, a, he uh, did. He did used to be a Birdman. Mm -hmm. but, but what I'm saying, E, that Gotti is successful because of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that, you know, a lot of artists say, I'm independent. You know what I'm saying? I, a lot of artists won't sign with an actual CEO that's a rapper. But I think what Gotti did, he put his money with a malt fist. And I think that changed the narrative. Because I remember a lot of guys would, wouldn't take that money, but right. that's seven hundred fifty thousand. But then you got to remember that's not just seven hundred fifty thousand. He also got production too. He got marketing, so he, they really get way more than seven hundred fifty. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I mean, this is just for your pocket, right? You know, and I think that that jury, you know, I, jury. jury, and then you see the the uh, the guy uh, 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 that signed uh, a finesse two time when he came out, he did the same thing. Yeah, he put the money up. And he put the jury up, and I think that you know that's the new wave of bringing approach to the industry. Yeah, now I, I think I know it is. So I, I don't know. Like I said, my main thing is is basically, man, when you look at like new the new era when we in the day when you look at entrepreneurship, being right. a business owner, yes, you know what I'm saying, being a uh, having a HHF, <laughs> uh, being a business owner, you know, mm -hmm. these things are things that that we seen. Early on, when we was when we was young, I go back to the young days when it was still blacks kind of stayed to themselves. Y'all don't remember that? Right. Yeah. When, uh, we had a the barbershop cross street, but we had Bubba Lang store up the street, mm -hmm. and it had like a few snack cakes and stuff. But we stayed to ourselves when I was a kid, three, four, five years old. You know what I mean? I think now with the way the internet is, it kind of pushes us back to a place where we have the opportunity to be able to be who we need to be to our people. Right. I really exactly. think that. Yeah, but, but like, we didn't like have that like in the middle. It was, yeah. yeah, we didn't have that in the middle. If you really think about it, we they didn't call, have that. We were going to everybody uh, else. Yeah, they call this new black media. So oh, that's what Mr. Servon told me the other yeah, day. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was doing I was doing some research on it because I I'm finna, like I'm gonna do my podcast. I told you about that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Martina, you know, y'all might have seen on uh, white under white belly. That's a uh, Kenny Red's uh, turn. Yeah, yeah. So me and her, we doing a, a, a podcast called Few for the Game. And I was just studying podcasts, and they said, this is the new black media. They said, but a lot of the white media is really, really upset because they can't get a grip of it, and they didn't expect black media to be so powerful. But what it was, it was that, you know, when you have a supremacist mentality or you have a mentality that you feel someone else is inferior, then you stifle your growth because yeah. they could have right. been successful. Y'all could have been doing this. Uh, 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 BET could have been doing this, MTV could have been doing this, but they coming on the late show, and now that y'all doing it, you know, independently, right. now y'all don't need the money. Now Gilly, now turning down millions. Millions and, of and dollars. How many dollars deals? Millions. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just crazy because, you know, black media is the media for all people. Because you, you say, I tell people all the time, I say, when you look at... Uh, 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 drink shops doing 12 million those yeah. are not all black folks mm -mm. 
So, you know, even white people love black media. So mm -hmm. black media is, is the, the wave of the future. Yeah, and hip hop, <laughs> I think, uh, caused that spiral as well. Yeah. Being that because of the yeah, way man. the way it was already in those crevices, right, and yeah. then to see us be able to step to the side with something like this that they didn't see coming, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's here now. Right. Like yeah. you look up it, everywhere now. Some people uh, theirs don't take off like others, but everybody's getting in there. I want to see so many people do it because, like I say again, you hip to this? Mm -mm. No, we're gonna talk about it. This uh, let me see. This, this, this is a spot five star grill. Me and him oh, talking about. He's been trying to get me over there. Yes, man. Yeah. Oh, that wow. food is so that, good. But he didn't have it. He didn't have a restaurant when we we talked to him at Big T. I he salad didn't have, he had, you salad had, uh, I had it for a year. So you didn't? Did he have you? I, that was a, that was over a year ago. No, he was building. It took him about two years to because he had to take the bottom. Man, I'm coming, located, I'm coming over right there. In Big T, I'm coming to eat. No, no, he got his own spot in the south. Yeah, uh, man, Jonathan, that's a nice Jonathan spot. E. It's five a nice grill. Spot. Me and you five going star, over there. Five star grill. Five star grill. It's breakfast yeah. and lunch. No dinner. Oh, uh, we have dinner food. We have steaks. We have everything. What time you you open and close? We open at ten in the morning on weekdays, and we close at twelve midnight. And on weekends, we close on Fridays. We close at three a.m. and Saturdays, we close at tonight. We close at four a.m. So we're wow. out wow. there. Wow, wow, so you have everybody a coming over there. So right. a lot of family, San, um, Sandaga. Uh, we have a nice crowd. We always How have. How is the parking? What is that? Oh, it's it's thirty three thirty. Elsie Faye Higgins. Uh, yeah. The parking is humongous. It's okay. Just want to make it's sure. A, it's a big it's parking mall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man, that's hard. Got that's soul. good hey, because most hey. of those after after hours spots e, don't have good. He got parking. a clothing store in there too. A big close to about five oh, times. Level one about, fashion. About four times the size of this. Really? Level and one then, fashion. And he got a, a soul food around the corner. Man, the soul food. You don't care, yeah. man. You yeah. Yeah, I already knew you was over Which there. Which one's better, the soul food or this? Well, the soul food opens up in two weeks. So I had this a small oh, okay. organization, a Human X Investor. It's an investment company. Wow. So okay. you can go online and see it, humanexes.net. So what we did is we collect, collectively we um, um, come together, uh, quite a few of us. So I have another business partner. So for an instance, say like if we wanted to do a daycare. Yeah. So while you're doing radio, while she's setting clothes, while he's doing his things, and we create a day daycare, and the daycare is like 20000 we put up four thousand a piece, so now we've created another stream right. of income. That's right. So like while crowdfunding. That's, so yeah. while that's going on, and you're still doing what you're doing, so we find another opportunity to open up another business. Business, then we all collectively collectively invest into that business. So right. now, it's like we have four or five different streams of income coming in, and um, you know, we our kids. You know, we create generational wealth for that's our kids. That's hard, yeah. man. But I, I hate the it. thing I hate I about love it. Um, stuff like that because I hate partnerships. Right, because um, unless they're silent partners where they're not gonna input their into anything, then I'm good. I, I showed um, my whole organization to uh, Miss Joyce uh, Williams. She's um, director of small business development. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes it because we have rules that govern us. And with our organization, you're on a three month probation period, and it's not for everybody. You can't be involved in nothing illegal. You can't be a part of nothing that's negative to be a part of our organization. And it's, you know, so we take our time and, and definitely like vent and screen the people who we allow to be a part of our organizations. But I understand when you say partnership, but anything in life that's ever been done, if it was done successfully, it was done at a mm, collective effort. Right. You gotta have So partners. So you are just investing into someone else's business. You're not putting- no, These are our businesses. It is your business. Yeah, these are our businesses. Okay. Yeah, no, it's no one. Okay. So, so the thing about it is like, if we go in and invest into a daycare, Mm -hmm. So now we share the expenses, we share the bills, and we share the... Um, the ideas of how to run this business, how to get yes, it. exactly. Okay. So then we all, you know, um, every month we get a check from that. Do y'all ever disagree? I mean, people agree to disagree, but I mean, it's not hard because daycares are all structured already, you know, um, they're governed by right. the law. So, law. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I just think that um, typically us, we have a tendency to want to um, have this entitlement, you know, so that's why... Everybody that, <clears throat> that's a part of our organization, they are already like realtors. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their own money. Right. So like I say. And they're already business people. Yes. It's you know? hard, man. I like it because, listen, man, you got a gift in you, man. Thank God you, just I basically, I already seen it a long time ago. You can tell, man. I just started my record label, too. What? Dang, how many yeah. things you do? <laughs> it's called the Star Entertainment. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice, serve man. Our entertainment. Alcohol? The star. A, a, Y'all serve alcohol? A part of no. the hip-hop fraternity. <laughs> we got to get him the over there. The star entertainment. Yeah. That's hard, hey, I'm man. E, e, I'm going to get uh, 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 Valentina to open up a chapter up here. Now. Oh, he going to do it? 
Yeah, he got star entertainment. He wow. might as well. He, 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 he HHL. HHL. Yeah. He HHL. He, he always he he born all, into it. All it's of all. HHL. Yeah, right. just, that's right. all. We all a part of the hip the fraternity. I love hip hop. Yeah. We all I, love the community of hip hop. As soon as you told me about it, I was all the way in because for you to try to bring some pe brothers together and still give them they you know you still independent, but we just coming together. Yeah, I just want to so say, say hard, man. your wife is says that my partnership. My mama y'all say, she tell my daddy. Yeah, nigga, we a partnership. He said, we ain't no partnership. He said, how you think we all these goddamn keys? <laughs> <laughs> so none of us, man, they used to be arguing. And they could, my mom used to have her money over here. My daddy, but they were, my mom was like, put the money with, with the my, mom, my daddy loved the gavel, so he want to take his you money. Wanna, you don't want to see yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, he going to fuck the money up. My mom said, we a partnership. <laughs> He was like, you know, it just, it just, when she, no, she no, you with my mama, said. yeah, it's just, it, it, it's so, my mama said, yeah, we, how we, we, it took two of us to make the kid, that was a partnership, so mm -hmm. she said, they couldn't have the kids without the partnership, that's real, you know, so we might as well have a partnership in real life, so, you know, partnerships hey. is good, you know, but, man, you know, I mean, you know, that's to each his reach, you know, I gotta saying? ask you about, uh, I, I had Julia Beverly on here, oh, and I Julia. had, a, yeah, I had Julia on here, and I, I, I the book, like I said, I was looking at the book, but I was looking at some things, and you, you, Pimp and Ken not in that book, but I know you were on film with, with Pimp and everything else, and have hung with him or whatever. I didn't. I was trying to figure out how did how you were in it to be honest. I saw the interview. I think that's when you asked yeah. him about uh, Is that the tape, right? Ozone? Huh? Is yes. That Julie from Ozone. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Julia Beverly. Okay. She was on here. She she well, came through, man. You, you loved it. She showed. You want up. me to speak on that? Yeah. I was just trying to understand how you end up getting how you wasn't. In the book, you know what I mean? Well, you know, the only reason would be would be politics because Julie Beverly and Pimp C, if you look at the best of both worlds, is at my house. She's okay. playing basketball. That's the white girl playing basketball in the movie, you know, and, you know, Pimp C, all of them, they in my... Uh, That's at your house. Yeah, they, they in my gazebo, you know, and they smoking weed. You know, I ain't saying Julie was smoking weed. They but drinking they doing something. Good time. You, know, you know, she she didn't ate at my table, you know, uh... You know, I'm in the Ozone magazine. You know what I'm saying? You're in Ozone. Yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, me and Pimp C. I bought. I paid personally. I paid her personally for the advertisement. You know, so uh, it's just ironic, man, that she didn't put me in there. But I mean, to say that she don't know me would be, you know, a blatant lie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She know me, and she know she could at least say I was at Pimp Ken House with Pimp C. I'm not mad because you know. The first time I ever heard this was with you. And I talked a bit, Julie Beverly. I even tried to do some business with her, uh, with the Boosie book. You know what I'm saying? Really? She, she was one of the, the authors, you know, because she had I, I inquired. To do her. a lot of journalism. And, uh, yeah, she, and, and uh, so uh, Simon Schuster asked me uh, to reach out to her. You know, so I reached out to her. But, you know, uh, we couldn't come up with a decent price. So I don't have no issues with Julie. I just found it, you know, kind of strange, you know, as you, because I wouldn't think about it, but now that you say it, it's found, It's kind of strange that I wasn't in there because me and Julie Bivet, Beverly have been in many situations together. I mean, many situations. How you think I got into my house? Yeah. You know, she ain't just came to my house. You know, nobody just come to nobody's house. You know, so she's at my house actually playing basketball on my basketball court. You know, she's actually at the hotel with Pimp C. You know what wow. I mean? She's at that. I come, I come pick her and Pimp C up at the hotel to take them to my house. You know, uh, so it was it was kind of strange. And, you know, it's funny to me in the European community, a lot of our European brothers and sisters who uh, ascribe to hip hop, they have a propensity to think that they have some type of, uh, you know, ownership in our culture and that they can sometimes, you know, just counsel us out. Like in the case of Vlad TV. You know, yeah, he, he yeah. knew, Vlad well, knew that I, you know, knew Boosie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's been many instances where I was I remember at the episode. Boosie House. So, you know, so when I think about, you know, some of these people, like I said, our European brothers and sisters, you know, I think once they get in our culture and we accept them, I think they get a little bit dismissive. And I think they get a little, you know. Uh, Have that you know, entitlement. Yeah, entitlement yeah. and beside themselves is what I would like to say. Yeah. And I think for Julie Beverly to write a book, and not include Pippa Cannon in, in her, her book either. She's not uh, cognizant of the culture, and she just doing it as an opportunist, or you know she may have some underlying issues that I don't know nothing about. Yeah, yeah. You know because I personally never had any. Like I said, I gave her money 
to you know I advertise, that book. you know what I'm saying to advertise with her and I gave her money being, so, being that, that, that magazine and I went to her uh, her war show you with, was there yeah with, with, did uh, you go no, but she was at the uh, she was at the funeral, a pimp funeral. Remember yes, yeah, yeah, she was at the funeral. The, yeah, all, all that. She was at the funeral yeah. as well. I don't remember seeing her, but yeah, I believe she was. There. She was there. Wow, you know, it's just like I said, this pimp. And look, I'm a big pimp fan, as y'all already know if you watch this show. And just the the, the things that come because he just had that birthday, the things that be coming, you know, basically with the storylines, you know. Of, how things transpire with Pimp Man. A lot of people say they're gonna make a lot of money if he just stayed living. Everybody say so. Everybody was dealing with Pimp, and it seemed like he was dealing with a lot, a lot of different individuals. When I say that, he's a Leo, uh, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, Bobo, you. Uh, everybody saying the same thing. Like we was working with Pimp Man, and things were about to happen. You know. And yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, she said something in the interview about. Some stories is what? What she say about? About well, I asked. You, I asked, asked about, about the, the sex tape, and she said and what? she was basically saying that um, uh, some of the stuff is some stuff is not uh, credible. Credible. Mm -hmm. It was something like that. Well, you know, that's what I said. You know, that's what a lot of our European brothers and sisters, man, they need to back up. You know, when it comes to our culture, that's why the hip hop fraternity is taking such a forceful, you know, approach towards you know uh, getting our culture back because you know for her to say. That some things are incredible, which is insinuating that, you know, maybe my message was incredible. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I could even talk about other things. You know, I don't even want to talk about, you know, the hotel room, you know, when, you know, people in my hometown, you know, and, you know, people supposed to be professional, but they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. You know what I wow. mean? You know, so, you know, you, you talk about, uh, you know, a certain things are incredible, but if I was to be credible, and if I was to quote some of the things that I heard from, you know, Pimp C. Mouth, you know, personally about, you know, certain individuals, certain people, and help people that wouldn't, you know, I got, I got actual footage, you know, uh, Pimp, you know, uh, with uh, Jazzy Faye and everybody in the room with Pimp talking about, you know, d certain individuals who he don't fuck with. You know, yeah. we had to tell Pimp, you know, man, you know, man, Pimp, chill out, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm very credible. I was there in a lot of instances, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you think I'm lying, just look at the uh, the uh, Maroy, go to Maroy and look at uh, me and Pimp in the studio. You know, uh, you know, Wycliffe, what's his name, Wycliffe, what? What's his name, Wycliffe John? Wycliffe John. Uh, Wycliffe John. Wycliffe John. You know, he hates you. Yeah, yeah. Ask, ask Wycliffe how many, we all stayed in the same hotel. You know, Wycliffe, my man, me, him, and Pimp C. You know, I was there in the studio. The studio where we made two type of bitches was in L.A. Man, that was a whole. So, you know what I'm saying, me, you know, I mean, credible. Who more credible than the dude that was with him when he was down? Who was the only person that go see him in prison? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, l listen to the, the the best of both worlds. I was there to go see him when he was in the county jail. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I tried to go see him in prison. He told me no. He, you heard what he said. He said, I told Ken, don't subject yourself. This is all on tape. So, you know, I'm not credible if that's what she insinuated. That's impossible to say I'm not credible. You know, I was there, you know, when when, when nobody went there, when when no no groups, no nothing, no names, no record labels, nothing. We was sitting there, you know, I got a tape, go look at it. It's on it's on it's on the internet. It's called Boss Pimp with Chick Boss John Doe and uh four or five. I think the guy that had four or five. And the song is uh Fucking with Your Diamonds on. That's when Pimp was at his low point. I was there. You know wow. what I'm saying? I mean, I've been there on for all five as I was up to the UGK album. So for somebody to say I'm not credible, show me a creditation compared to what I just showed you. You know, sh to give me your point. Only time I seen you and Pimp together, y'all was coming out the hotel room together. That's the only time I seen, wow. you know, her and Pimp together and at my house. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so it ain't like, you know, uh, you was with Pimp every day. You might have called him and whatever, you know, and so on and so forth. But, you know, I was there at the mall. I can tell you what happened when he went to jail. You know what I'm saying? Me, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was there when he, he told me to get out. He said, Ken, we in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I you was, talking about when, the, when he went to jail, went I was there. The day he was in jail, about that. and I went to the county so jail. So you was at the mall? I was at the mall, and I went to the county jail to visit him. You know what I'm saying? Me, two days later. You know what I'm saying? Me, and. You uh, was at the mall when them girls had 
Cause Bobo told that story about pimp that yeah. told him that yeah. the girl had tried he to thought get she, fly with him. Now he thought she was going to a person get a pistol, and pimp did whatever he did, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, uh, he had I think he had a little pack of sun on him, yeah. or whatever. And th that situation, I guess he got caught up. But I went this way, he went that way. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I did not know you was there that day, man. I've been in that about that. Not, You're not only was there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. Anybody that know that club, I forget the name of the club, that his mama lived right across the street from, you know, when he had the gold, the gold, uh, what's them cars, them Chevys called, uh, he had a gold one, just like the one, the black one everybody drive, the little Chevy with the little little deer or something on it. I don't know too much about that. What's Chevy with it the deer the on it, man? Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to think. No. I'm old and I love no, them you know, cars. They got the little circle thing and it's got a little something in them little Chevys, the ones. That, 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 oh, yeah, you talking about that, uh, the Thunderbird? Is it the Thunderbird? It's the Chevy. Impala. I think it's Impala. Impala, Impala. Why you know? How the hell you know about Wait a minute, kid. We got to stop the show. Nah, you know about them show. Impalas, man. Don't worry about that. I'm going I'm to get to the bottom of this. This is Impala, man. She wrote it back one. You wrote about it? <laughs> Whoa, 20 up. years of marriage been come to a, a screeching halt, nigga. Let's now, go. E, so, so, E, I'm at his mama house. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know his mama personally. So, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody more credit, credited to, with Pimp than me, you know? She was a sweet lady. You know, we, she was a sweet lady. You, you know, knew Mama West? Yeah. yeah. Well, how did you know her? Um, I did a show in Memphis uh, with Pimp, and uh, one of the promoters that, uh, there in Memphis, he did a show the next day at the same venue, he brought Boosie there. Yeah. So what he did, he tried to divide the crowd. Okay. Mm. You know, so Mama West, she um, called me. She said, uh, son, I appreciate you. She said, you didn't cry, you didn't bitch, you didn't bellyache, you gave Pimp all this money. She said, we're going to do another show for you. You know what I'm saying? She said, don't worry, because I lost on the show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when he yeah, just came cool. home. Yeah, but she, so you promoted the shows yeah, in, in Memphis home. for yeah. mm. So you been doing that? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing wow. a lot of promotion, yeah. But, I didn't uh, even know. Yeah, Mama West, she was real sweet. Man. You know? yeah. Go look at the video when Pimp C first come out of jail. I was there. I'm saying this because I want You talking about at the Walls unit? No, when he when he was in the Bentley and he had the stripy shirt on. That's, okay. That's me with the red suit on. So what I want Julie Beverly to do, you know what I'm saying? What I like for Jeff to do to, to, for me is to do a part two. Of the book? Yeah, and include me in it. And I, I gave her enough accreditation on me that that I'm not credible to let her know. <laughs> y'all laughing at me, y'all. But she don't validate you. That's, you know. <laughs> no, no. But but I call her to help with the boosie. But your they, platform oh, is so oh, much oh, bigger oh, than oh, I call her to help the boosie. I was going to get her a hundred thousand dollars. So you know what I'm saying? I wish people in the industry treat me like Ken treat them. You know so when you had called her to do that, she didn't answer or she didn't reply well, back well, to you? Well, well, what happened was, okay, the first uh, person was, uh, she called me, we talked, it was it was, it was, it was an issue with the money <clears throat> and her, uh, I guess you would say her, her credibility. Mm -hmm. So Simon Schuster was like, how many books she done? And, you know, they wanted to know. I said, well, she did the Pimp C book. You know what I'm saying? I think she know about the culture. She's been around the culture. So I was really pushing for her to right. get it because I wanted her to do it. You know, I was looking at the Pimp C and, you know, cause you know, I'm a businessman, right? You know, my first approach to business is, you know, what works good for the person I'm doing business with. I never take a personal uh, approach to business, right? So you would never see me tripping when it comes to business. So I just thought she would be a good look for the culture and everything else, you know, but you know, like I said, I want her to do a part two, Pimp C part two, and add me in the book because I just gave y'all a litany of all the opportunities and all the times me and Pimp been together. You know what I'm saying? Me, so I should have been in the Pimp C book. And you know, if she don't do a book, I'm gonna write my own book and I ain't gonna put her in. <laughs> no, it. <laughs> man. But you know what? I, I'm gonna be real. I think a movie, a, a movie is next. I, th mm -hmm. I a, a, a short film or something on the pimp or something, because of all of the different people, man. Because <laughs> one dude got, I didn't seen one person say, man, come like I read the comment. He say, man, don't just say pimp for Texas. Like I was like, I ain't say that. They get defensive, man. Like a lot of people love his. His whole, you know, what he did, what he stood for in the South, man. Even the fact of when he went off on on, on the Atlanta, uh, the situation in Atlanta, when he, when he called the radio station. Um, I know you told him not to do it, but I'm just saying that's a part of history now. You know, a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge the fact, but like Rick James, I just had uh, them saying that Rick James uh, find his eye on here. But the last thing I remember about Rick James on BET was I'm Rick James. That's the last thing I remember. 
Am I right? Right. Yeah. And, and, and it, it sends volumes. Now, I ain't saying that on Pimp because Pimp has so much more going on. Man. But I'm just saying these are things that stick out. That's all I'm saying. Well, you know, a, a, a movie, yeah. a, a movie, right, with Pimp C, I don't know how we would get that done. Maybe if we did a movie about something else and had a Pimp Included C character. Pimp in there. You know what I'm saying? I don't, because, you know, I think it's so much going on with this state and so many people claiming you know rights to certain things that it might be a difficulty Mm -hmm. it just it will be live though you know what I mean same thing I gotta ask you about uh, Gangsta Boo and what just happened with that I'd already asked Pippi Ken I'm asking you though Valentino like being from Memphis seeing you know what's happening with with everybody everybody say this they say that but for to lose a, a, a legend like that for me, she was a she was big for for the women. For you, you know, she was one of the first ones. You know, right. people don't really think right. about that. But early yeah. on, it was tough to be a female artist, man. You know what I mean? Right. So just give me a spiel on on just uh, what she meant to the game. Man, Boo was a big icon, uh, but Boo was so down to earth. You know, um, she messed with everybody. You know, um, and one thing I can say about Boo, who she dealt with, she dealt with. You know, she was true to them. She never appeared to be more than what she was. You know, um, she had people in Vegas that was from Memphis. It's like who you saw Boo with, that's who you saw Boo with. You know, um, Memphis Black, you know, um, mm. Curtis, uh, just a lot of people, you know, um, that she dealt with. She always dealt with them. She didn't, you know, um, she never switched up, you know. Yeah, yeah. she stayed true to yeah, it. Stayed true. Like, can't like y'all. Like, mm-hmm. like the, the celebrity can get to some people, and they be become this... It amplifies their character in a way to where it becomes distasteful sometimes. This I I see this in a lot of people. I've met a lot of people like this. That's why I know I can speak on this. Right. Everybody not approachable. Right. Hey, let true. me switch it around from the game perspective, right? <clears throat> Guys like me and Valentino, we used to the Rolls Royces. We used to buying the new cars. We used to the jury. So before we came a, a star, or so to speak, before we came known in the public, we was already known in the streets. So that never affected us you know like we would see celebrities and you know uh, uh people would run up you know and try to get an autograph we didn't do that you know the celebrities would run up to us and get I an know. autograph so it was, was a, it was the flip script so the gang kind of took over you know uh when Pip, when 50 cent first seen me he like hey you know uh Pip <laughs> yeah, saying, what's hey, up? you know no and, and you uh, Nelly you know what I'm saying we I'm sending in uh I guess I, I can't forget I can't man everybody know that part, that bar over there on Tempton uh I can't remember that. I think it was the shock, shock bar or whatever. But I'm in there, so Nelly's sitting right here, and I'm right here. And Nelly, you know what I'm saying, me, at this time sold 10 million records. He looked over, and my guy, uh, damn, I don't remember his name. He uh, from Minnesota. My guy from Minnesota, uh, he's going to be mad because I don't remember his name. But he, <laughs> he, he bought a couple bottles of champagne. And uh, so he said, man, get Nelly in that bottle. So I reached over there, I gave him a bottle. And Nelly looked at me and said, Pimp and Ken? And it was like everybody, you know, was looking at us, you know, like we was the shit. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't know we was the shit. We was just out there doing our thing. You know, and I guess it may be because of pimps up, hold down. These, I ain't going to lie on these niggas. You know, you know, these niggas, they listening. So, I'm, you know, these, these niggas was all happy to yeah. see us. Yeah. Same thing with Bishop Don Juan. Same yeah. thing with Valentino. Every time I go with him, Gotti, all them uh, big jerk, they love this brother. They love you know him. what I'm saying? Yeah. And he got that same effect. We got an effect on, on the people that's rapping about because in some way they believe they're rapping about our lives. So, you know, we never got overexcited or overzealous about being a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he always would tell me, Ken, you can do this. Ken, you can do this. Ken, Ken, Ken. And I'd be like, man, I ain't got time for that shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just going to be normal. I just want to go to Big T, sell me some DVDs, go to uh, Ecstasy, sell That's some real. DVDs, Keep uh, it uh, uh, go to Jackson, pull up on my man Gino, you know what I'm saying, I mean, mess with my guys from the Goon Squad, you know, and sell them some DVDs, go to Atlanta, go on the east side, go to Milwaukee, go to, uh, where we go to, uh, uh, Playmakers and uh, 14th Street, and I'm cool. Where are you at? I'm cool. I don't want to be like this, you know what I'm saying? I mean, even though I have the biggest organization in hip hop, I got 4,000 members, 25 chapters, all my members will tell you, I'm the same. They can't believe it, you know? You know uh, who else can't, um, had that type of effect on people? Who? Uh, Double D. Yeah, my Double cousin. D, yeah, Double D was oh, Double D were like that? Yeah, oh, they yeah. They loved him. They loved him. They loved him. They they loved see him. him. When they see him? Yeah, they loved him. They, they, yeah. would, they would start what they're doing, try to acknowledge him, man. Good like, dude. how did you end up first meeting Nelly, though? 
Nelly. Uh, I don't know him like that. I met him a lot. Of through, I met through, through Kenya. So I met him through association. Kenya always tell me. I never locked in. Like you never locked yeah. in, but you just yeah. like you just like mm-hmm. see they you see and, and and that's what it's all about, man. Building relationship. It's right. some kind of way this dude right here, like I said, he had this effect on people. They're like when we first came, when the people's out there in the parking lot, they gonna excited, see him. They gonna be excited, man. Right. Because but they it, done, all of the work that you put in too, though, right? But, but you know, you know where I really got the. The, the old man in prison, right? Named Mr. Black. He, I can remember his name. Wow, I remember <laughs> nigga in prison, but I can't remember. Ain't that the way it go? Uh, I can't remember the dudes that's out in the streets, but that's weird. I'm institutionalized, but anyway, text, text Derek. Any, anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Black told me. He said, "Man, you got that it factor." Because when I used to be in prison, I was a little skinny right nigga, black. I mean, I was a little skinny nigga, E, but everybody respected me and loved me in the joint. I messed with the D.C. dude. Everybody. The Milwaukee, the Chicago cool, the you know, everybody, you know. So I go in the yard, man, everybody showed me love. So that's, I think, where I first got that spirit. I think it's a spirit, you know what I mean? And that's like I said, you know, too short, all them people, I go to their house, man, it's a spirit. Mm-hmm. And people trust mm-hmm. me instant, instant. You know, like I've been in his crib, you know what I'm saying? People trust <laughs> me. People trust me immediately. You know, man. All, all, man, all my friends, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Big Al at uh, Peach Cobbler, and uh, he got. He also got the club uh, 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 VVS and uh, the U-Bar Millionaire. You know what I'm saying? All my friends, I can just go down the line. They all millionaires. You know, they all rich. And, you know, they all welcome me to their crib. They never expect me to be that dude that's going to, you know, set them up and nothing like that. Right. I just had that spirit my entire life. You know what I'm wow. saying? I mean, and, and, and it was before <laughs> the celebrity, though. You know, even like when I used to be in Milwaukee, you know, all the all the bosses, you know, Jim Danny, the coldest dude ever in Milwaukee. When I say the coldest dude ever, he's the coldest dude ever as far as Gambling and playing, he's the top five player. At 14 years old, this old man took me in. Wow, took me in and raised me until he died. He died about about two years ago. He was 87. Oh. Wow, called me on the phone, talked to me, schooled me, gave me game. You know, uh, all the pimps. You know, uh, 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 Rob Robinson. You know, Tommy Dixon. You know, all the major pimps in the city. They all loved me. You know, everybody was. You know, uh, one of our coldest uh, hustler ever. You know, he he kind of like on some Valentina side, uh, Penitentiary Sam. Yeah. OG. Love me, man. I, I went to the feds, and some when I got in the feds, these dudes, <laughs> they was the moles. I'm a mole now. It's crazy, right? So when I go in there, you know, uh, they, they you know they had the phone situation in the feds in the MCI, Memphis, MCI, Chicago. So I'm in MCI, Chicago, but I got a penitentiary, man. I tell you, I just got out. I ain't, I ain't what I was saying. But I, I just got out of Green Bay, which is a real penitentiary. So I'm ready to throw them, you know, I, I, I got penitentiary mentality, right? So I'm thinking, I'm gonna whoop this dude. I didn't know all of them was together. And even penitentiary Sam was with him. So penitentiary Sam put me to the side. He said, man, they finna shank you. I said, shank me for what? All I told the nigga, like, man, I, you know, it was just a phone dis- dis- dispute. You know, it wasn't even no major stuff. I wouldn't know this. They still want to do it. Yeah, so uh, the dude named Ross Bay, who was the leader, who was the grand sheet, he pulled me to the side, and we got to chopping up. And I hear me spit, you know, because I was a little fly dude. You know, I spit right up. I, I mean, I had no vocab. I was just straight street shit. I'm talking a lot of street shit. He turned out to be a street dude. Mm-hmm. So he liked me. He said, man, this is my little partner. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking with him. So he asked me to come to a meeting. He started teaching me about the Moore Science Temple and everything, you know, and that's how I got hooked up with him. And, you know, that saved my life. You know, and Sam, you know, all through the, the penitentiary, <coughs> he showed me all the tricks and trades of the game. You know what I'm saying? Me, so, you know, I just always had that, you know, I mean it was never just the celebrities, but whoever was the top tier in any game, or well, they was street celebrities, you know, like Valentino. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Me and him, we talked to each other like fish tech to water, you know what I'm saying? We automatically hit all. You know, his cousin, Double D, may rest in peace. We automatically hit off. You know, all his partners, Goldie McDowell, Burroughs, you know, it's just so many, Christ, Skinny, all of them, we automatically hit off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I had a, a good love and relationship in the streets. All the top dudes in the streets was the same. So when I went to the entertainment side, it was the same way. So it's got to be my character, because I can't see, you know, I ain't got no magic wand or nothing to say, hey, you like me, 50 Cent. You like me, Nelly. You know what I'm saying? So they just, they, everybody just, man, you know, even to this day, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, all the podcasters, you know, like. They you, love you, yeah. Y'all, love y'all you all sure. love me and respect yeah. me, you know what I'm saying? And I, they, 
Hey, tell me, your, your platform, you open any day. I need to ask you, uh, what do you think about checking in when people go to different cities? That's something <laughs> that I've been asking people about. Like, you, you see different people, they go to cities, they check in. Um, they with certain groups of people, you know, uh, whether it be in Cali, whether it be in Houston, whether it be wherever. This check in thing where they just come to the city and both of y'all can get a chance to answer this. No, I ain't sure. no, I need to hear this. You know, I need to hear what y'all take is on. I think for the majority of the black people, their ego be their worst of ego. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if things are already established in a city, you know, and if you mess with these people, why not check in? Hey, I'm here. You know, what do you have to lose? You know, yeah. uh, um, some people internalize that as a form of weakness. You know, but. I don't see a problem with it. You know, I guess it's how the individual choose to internalize what checking in it, it, it is. is. Yeah. You know, uh, me, uh, uh, my thing is like, what are the results of not checking in? You gonna hurt me? You know, so I think that aspect of it is crazy, you know, because if you're gonna hurt me because I don't check in, that means you don't love me. You know, you don't have no respect yeah. for me. But if there are people that I deal with, now I guess you can say, if you say, where if I'm checking in, I'm letting you know I'm here, but I mean, what you saying, I have to pay you or something like that? That's, that's extortion. Yeah, that, that's something totally different. But you know, hey, yeah, I, I mean, but I think, <clears throat> this is what I think. I think the people who are street stars and they haven't elevated to that platform where they're major stars and they have a relationship with those people that has that, that type of platform, they just want to feel connected, you know, uh, uh, and... I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, man. You know, wow. people want to say, hey, I know Pimp and Ken. I want, they want to say, I know God. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's all about how the individual chooses to ter- internalize what checking in is. But me, I don't have a problem getting on the phone and say, hey, I'm on my way. I got a uh, partner at Big Mo. Uh, 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 he lives in L.A. You know, this is my partner. He comes down here. When he come here, we know, I look out for him. Correct. Uh, I, I go up there, but I got partners. Even if you go to Atlanta, you're going to yeah. tap in with Ken. I, I like Ken. But like yeah. I said, I got people out there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have a problem with I think I think the problem is the word within itself check in <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying you know that is what it is. now if you say hey when you get to the city hit me up or, 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 or look me up you know but when you say check in I think that's the the word is more it's the issue you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah. so it's, it's they here. feel like it's taking something from them as a, as a man but no I don't have no problem reaching out or letting somebody know hey I mean I want to let them know I'm in the city yeah, already you know? well, the what do you think about it the word yeah. come from the penitentiary so you know <laughs> when, when when you come to the penitentiary if you're a GD or vice lord crip or blood you got to check in so, you know it, and let people know what set you on so I think some of the people on the streets have used that word in the in the penitentiary vernacular but yes. like what he say you know, when I when I come in I check in with him I check in yeah, with yeah, you that's how I'm here yeah, today I that. check in so I don't have no problem with checking in because that's the only safety that I have. Yeah. You know, I say, Valentina, I'm in the city and if something happened and somebody was to, you know, accidentally get have an accident or I got shot, you know, he gonna get on the phone, he's gonna call my people, Hey man, I need Ken mama number, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, man, I heard something bad happen to Ken. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, checking in let pretty much let the people know and I do it in every city. You know. Uh, even in uh, when I get to Atlanta, I check in with the people that I know are there, mm-hmm. and even though I live there, you know what I'm saying. So checking in is a good thing, but I think where it came from, you know, from me being in, in the Lord Tower, a lot of times it yeah. came it come from the penitentiary. It's a penitentiary. You got to check. Even like when I went to Memphis, right, uh, and I was in the Shelby County. I just got out the feds. You know, I had a state uh, hold on me, a uh, probation hold. And the nigga was like, uh, nigga out of Chicago, was like he was calling for the uh, GDs. He said, man, you got to check in. You know, and then check in. Also, I mean, check them shoes in, check them glasses in, check that. You know, if you if you come in, cause like, you know, that's why they don't let niggas wear gym shoes. Back then, they used to let like you got some new Georgians back then. That's when they first came out, the blue ones and the black and white and the red. If you wore them, you had to check them in. If you had glasses, they would check them. They they make you check in. You know what I mean? So that's what check in means. So that's why a lot of people, you know, when they hear the word, it's a negative connotation. Because you know it's a pen, it's definitely a penitentiary word. I've been hearing it for well, years, yeah, all the time. Right. You know, you've been in time, right? You know, you. That's why you laughing. You know, you know. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of times people take the word you you hit it on the knob. Right. I know what's going on. I'm basically when I go to a city, the people I rock with, I'm gonna call them anyway. It's just the way they're saying right. it. You know? 
you know, I'm gonna call them because I'm just I want to see them a lot so of times. So changing in uh, call in, <laughs> right? Exactly. You know us. <laughs> We as black people, man, we can make each other feel so bad about simple things. Man. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I just think that when you see that, that's something that you have to get away from. So if you had a, a brand new Rolls Royce, you know, uh, uh, how long would you want to keep that car, a brand new Rolls Royce? Maybe about a year? A year. Okay. So why not lease it? You know, yeah. but people will make you feel bad because you're leasing the car opposed to buying the car. You know? So, so uh, uh, people... They ask you if people see you with a, a, a brand new Rolls Royce, they'll be like, "What year is it? Does it matter? Don't you matter. Know, they're not proud, proud of you. You know, uh, um, are you buying it? Does it matter? You know, but if you buy that car, man, you're gonna have to pay the maintenance and everything that comes along with that. Mm-hmm. People will make you feel bad about things about your accomplishments. You know, so you just kind of be you got to be cautious about the people that you. A lot in your circle, man. Especially when man. people are always down you. Valentino. What you said. Happy <laughs> begin. Valentino, man, listen, man. Thank you guys for coming on the show, man. Y'all, man, listen, man. I ain't playing with you, man. I've been doing both of y'all for years, man. Right. Always been the utmost respect. Right back at you. And we we business gurus. I'm going to call us gurus. Sure? Gurus. <laughs> I'm Guru. so proud Guru. of what you're doing over there in the South, man. man. I'm not playing with that. Like, and we're going. We're we going. Definitely. I've been to everybody else's spot. I'm like, yeah. why be, I ain't get, we got over there. He, you were going to get me over there to do the show. But All I said, right. it's going to be too loud in there, man. I said, I didn't know if it had a closed in room. Yeah. I remember asking that, right? Yeah, they got closed. He got locked. I was he like, got man, I, but we, you remember, but we ended up bringing everybody over here and, and yeah. doing the podcast mm-hmm. afterwards. But it was some, like, like I don't know. We'd be so busy, but I'm making it an effort. What days you open? Every day. You open tomorrow? Yes, sir. Game. What are we doing tomorrow? The game, the game is tomorrow. The Do game tomorrow. Yeah. Well, what, time what, time? On, what time you open on Sundays? On Sundays we open at 12. What time the game is? Uh, five. Oh, I think it's like 5. I might come well, over and eat us a lunch. We have a You going to be around time. lunch or you ain't going to be around by uh, lunch? Time? If I'm not there, it's going to be open. You know. I know you. Know, I'm yeah, gonna be. Got, I'm gonna come see you when I'm well, taking you, you some pictures. You got my number. Just take a call. Number. Yeah, your number's yeah, still in on, my it's, phone. It's on that flyer. No, too. it's in my phone too. Okay. If you didn't change it. Okay, you got a million dollars and won't spend it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, I love y'all, man. Always <laughs> have, you, always will. Appreciate that. Hey, man, never man, let y'all go. You, I didn't get to talk to you about. Uh, you know, it was Big T. He gonna Mr. have to come back and do that interview by himself. I gotta get you. Yeah, no, but but it's a long term. Yeah, just the way you you I see you everywhere. Do a part two. Yeah, yeah he'll we'll come do back and two. do a part two. Love you guys, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 when a boss is talking.